Welcome to this video presentation on the Army Leadership Code, produced by the Centre for Army Leadership. This is the first in a series of video presentations we'll be delivering over the coming weeks and months, so please look out for future releases. I'm W1 Andy Stephen and I'm the Army's Leadership Warrant Officer, based here at the CAO, the Centre for Army Leadership. And today I'm going to be taking you through the Army Leadership Code. We're going to look at the context, briefly look at the history, and then take a deeper dive into the code itself. Context. We are currently in uncertain times. We have troops employed across the world on operations. Soldiers in isolation on camps or at home, and others preparing to deploy in support of UK operations. In all of those scenarios, we will find ourselves facing unfamiliar challenges, potentially working in newly formed or consistently changing teams that may be with other members of the British Army, both regular and reserve, foreign defence forces or members of other government departments within the UK. We as an army have a strong reputation for our ability to deal with uncertainty to conquer in the face of adversity. This reputation is founded on previous success. What separates us from others is our leadership. Throughout this presentation, I will talk about the Army Leadership Code. Never has there been a time where the principles are more applicable and relevant in order to prepare our leaders to cope with the varied and fast-paced environments they will find themselves working in. The Army differs from many other organisations in that we practice values-based leadership. Our behaviours are built upon a common understanding of our values and standards. No matter whether you are a regular, a reserve, an officer or a soldier, you will have completed a form of basic training to cement these values and standards that are then built upon throughout your careers. The Army Leadership Code was designed to translate these values into learned behaviours for every member of our organisation. History. The Army Leadership Code is based on nearly 40 years of academic research, underpinned by the full range leadership model. It has undergone varied field trials within the military. It was introduced into the Army in 2015, building on values-based leadership model. Values-based leadership was a resounding success with instructors employed in the training environment, but it did not permeate into the field army. The Army Leadership Code was designed to do just this. So let's look at the code itself. Firstly, there are three underpinning principles. Vision, support and challenge. The Army are good at providing vision in a formal setting. We cover this in our orders process, ensuring that the intent of our one and two up is understood by all. In newly formed teams, this is particularly important to ensure that everyone understands the overarching missions and tasks. Support. It is vital that we support our people through the challenges they may face, be that in developing their professional competence or supporting them emotionally as they find their work-life balance. In challenging times, soldiers may need more support dealing with issues such as mental health, self-worth, imposter syndrome, as well as understanding their place in the team. As a leader, you must provide this support, whether directly or by signposting to other agencies. Challenge. As we move into new roles with new people in new locations, everyone will feel challenged. It's important to get to know your new teams as quickly as you can. Understand what level of challenge each individual in the team can cope with to ensure that they feel engaged with achieving the task. We will now look at each of the seven leadership behaviours individually, but they all mesh together. You must not view them as seven separate entities to be employed independently. Much like our values, you cannot decide to prioritise one each day of the week and expect overall success. 
To lead by example, you must be the exemplar of our values and standards, living them 365, 24 seven. Ensuring that you never cut corners, that you do as you ought and not as you choose. In high pressure situations, people often do not know how to react. When faced with such a situation, they will look left and right and consciously or subconsciously decide who they trust the most and mirror that person's behaviour for that given situation. As a leader, you need to ensure that you are behaving in a way you want your soldiers to mirror. You must lead by example. This will help to develop trust within your team. We must encourage and allow our subordinates to think, to contribute to the plan. Rank does not give anyone the monopoly on good ideas. As leaders, we need to be humble enough to generate a challenge culture, where everyone has a voice, but remain confident enough to make decisions when required. This links into providing a clear vision. When and if everyone understands the bigger picture, we can delegate decisions, content that team members will make informed contributions, understanding the overarching goals. We have intelligent and talented soldiers and officers. Give them ownership and they will surprise you with their ingenuity. Apply reward and discipline. We need to ensure we are rewarding our soldiers, not just long-term rewards such as promotion or honours awards, but we need to do this daily. A simple thank you or well done can often be enough for someone to feel a valued member of the team and ensure they remain focused. In high pressure situation, a thumbs up, a nod at the head or simply making eye contact can be enough to reassure those feeling the pressure or those going above and beyond that they are appreciated. To ensure high performance, we must apply discipline, both to reinforce our reputation and the trust within the internal and external team, but also to ensure corners are not being cut or soldiers are not losing focus. At times, the best method of supporting a soldier is through discipline. Sometimes a friendly chat simply does not register with them that they are failing. Demand high performance. We must maintain our standards and continue to demand high performance of both the individual and the team. Again, setting a clear vision will support this. As leaders of newly formed teams, it is essential that you understand what is being asked of your team and that this becomes your standard. Be careful that you are demanding a, a level of performance to achieve the task and not a higher one for your own benefits. High performance can be equated to achieving the task. Do not allow mission creep to set in. As a leader, you must motivate and inspire your team members. This is especially important with new or cross-sector teams. Setting clear vision and supporting individuals to achieve this will develop trust and confidence in the team. Ensuring you lead by example will breed confidence in you as a leader and implying all of the other leadership behaviours will generate confidence in your team. Make sure you highlight team successes. Where things do not go as well as you like, do not dwell. Highlight the learning opportunities and improved ways of working for the future. Recognise individual strengths and weaknesses. In any situation, it is important you know your team, know their background and their future goals. For newly formed teams, this process will need to be accelerated so that you can fully utilise the individuals in your team. Communication is the key. Just talk to your team members, carry out some research, check their previous employment, check their competencies, see what skills they bring to the party. In high pressure situations, it may not be possible to fully develop a weakness, but as long as you know your individuals, you can balance the team to ensure the overall task is achievable. Strive for team goals. 
A team with shared goals will be more productive than one where individuals work to their own needs. Ensure you provide the team with a unifying purpose so they understand and can accept and achieve shared goals. This will help to quickly create a sense of team spirit or esprit de corps. Providing that clear vision and challenging the team will assist in this. As I have stated throughout, the behaviours link to the underpinning principles, as you can see from this slide. We provide the vision from leading by example, encouraging confidence in the team and striving for team goals. To support, we apply reward and discipline and recognise individual strengths and weaknesses. And finally, we challenge through encouraging thinking and demanding high performance. I see this as a model that you can hang your hat on. When moving jobs or being retasked into a new role, when working in a constantly changing high pressure environment, these provide a great checklist for the leader. Make time to plan before an event or reflect during or after an event and ask yourself how well you performed against each of these behaviours and underpinning principles. How will I or how did I lead by example? Did I strive for team goals? How will I set the correct vision? How will I support my soldiers? Be honest with yourself and ensure that you strive to continuously improve your approach for any future tasks. To summarise, we have talked about the importance of living the Army Leadership Code and how it translates the values and standards of the British Army into learned behaviours. Do not try to overcomplicate this. This is what we do daily. In challenging times, remember to look out for each other. Share good ideas, up, down and sideways, and continue to learn every day. The Army defines leadership as a combination of character, knowledge and action to inspire others to succeed. The character is just you, an extension of your personality. The knowledge is what you know. If you're lacking in areas, draw on the collective knowledge of the team. But most importantly, leading is about taking action. You can have the best character, be the most knowledgeable person, but without action, the task will never be achieved. You must be that inspiration, and by living the Army Leadership Code, you will be.